In this lesson, we're going to be simplifying rational expressions with multiplication and division. This is section 9.4 in the Algebra 2 book. First, we're going to review some factoring tips. Remember the first thing you do when you factor a problem is you look for a greatest common factor. x squared plus 3x is the kind of problem that you can take a greatest common factor out of. If you look at both terms, the x squared and the plus 3x, they have an x in common, and so what we can do is take that x out, put it in front of a parentheses. x would be left over from our first term, plus 3 is left over from our second term. So the correct way to factor this problem would be x, parentheses, x plus 3. The second type of factoring we're going to review is the trinomial factoring. A trinomial is something that has three terms. An x squared minus 3x plus 2 is something that has three terms, so this is a trinomial. Focus in on your end number to begin. Here we have a positive 2 on the end, and you want to think what multiplies together to make positive 2. Well, that would be 1 times 2. Now, we have to add up to make the middle number. Here the middle number is negative 3. So the only way we can get 1 and 2 to add up to make negative 3 is if both the 1 and the 2 are negative. So the factors for this problem would be x minus 1 and x minus 2. The third type of factoring we're going to review is the perfect squares factoring. We begin with a perfect square and we end with a perfect square. Here x squared is x times x, that makes it a perfect square. Negative 49 is 7 times negative 7, that makes it a perfect square. So the factors would be x plus 7 and x minus 7. Now we get into actually working on a rational expression and how to simplify it. Many times students will look at a rational expression or a fraction like this one and see that it has x squared on the top and x squared on the bottom and just try to cancel those out. You cannot cancel the x squareds in this kind of problem because the x squared on the top is married to the negative 5x and the x squared on the bottom is married to that negative 25 and you cannot break into those marriages like that. You also might look at this problem and see, well, I can reduce down my 5 and my 25. Again, you can't do that. The 5 is married by that subtraction sign, and the 25 is married by its subtraction sign. And you cannot break into a marriage. What we do instead is we try to factor. First, we're going to factor the top. What kind of factoring can we use on the top of this fraction? Well, we can use greatest common factor. Both terms have an x, and we're going to take that out. When we take out the x, we're left with x minus 5 left in the parentheses. Now we go to the bottom of the fraction. What kind of factoring can we use on the bottom? Perfect squares. x squared is a perfect square, negative 25 is a perfect square. So our factors would be x plus 5 and x minus 5. Notice on the top of the fraction and on the bottom of the fraction, you have x minus 5 in both places. That means you can cancel out that factor and our final answer would be x left on the top over x plus 5 left on the bottom. This is as much as we can do for reducing and simplifying. We cannot cancel the x on the top and the x on the bottom. The one on the bottom is married and you cannot break into its marriage. Try the next one. Pause the video until you're ready. Okay, we're going to factor the top by taking out a greatest common factor, which is 4. When we take out the greatest common factor of 4, we're left with x plus 5 left inside. On the bottom of the fraction, take out the greatest common factor of 3, and we're left with x plus 5. We have x plus 5 on top and bottom of the fraction. They'll cancel out. And when we do that, we're left with 4 over 3 for a final answer. On the next problem, it looks a little bit longer, but the process is the same. We're still going to factor and cancel. Do not try to break into marriages to cancel out x squareds. You have to factor and cancel factors that are the same. Start with the top left, x squared minus 4. What kind of factoring can we use on x squared minus 4? Perfect squares. The factors of this would be x plus 2 and x minus 2 by the perfect square method. Now look at the bottom left. This is a trinomial. What multiplies to make 9 and adds up to make 6? 3 and 3. So our factors are x plus 3 and x plus 3. On the top right, what kind of factoring can we use here? x plus 3 and x minus 3 by the perfect square method. 
and on the bottom right, another trinomial. What multiplies to make 4 and adds up to make 4? 2 and 2. So x plus 2 and x plus 2. Now the rules of canceling go that any factor that's the same on the top and the bottom or diagonally will cancel each other out. So when we have x plus 2 in the top left corner and on the bottom right corner they'll cancel. We also have x plus 3's in the top right corner and bottom left corner they'll cancel each other out. You can cancel one for one top to bottom or diagonally. Now we write our leftovers. Left over, I have an x minus 2 and an x minus 3 on the top. Left over on the bottom, I have x plus 3 and x plus 2. This creates my final answer. On the last example, we're going to be factoring and simplifying something where we're dividing with fractions. The rule for dividing fractions is called copy, change, flip. What that means is you're going to copy down the first fraction just like you see it, you're going to change the division to multiplication, and you're going to flip the second fraction upside down. So leave the first fraction alone, change the division to multiplication, and flip the second fraction upside down. So now the x squared minus 4x plus 3 is on top, and the x squared minus 5x plus 6 is on bottom. Now we're going to factor and cancel. Each part of this fraction is going to be factored by the trinomial method. On the top left corner, our factors would be x minus 5 and x plus 2. On the bottom left corner, our factors would be x minus 5 and x minus 1. On the top right corner, our factors will be x minus 3 and x minus 1. And on the bottom right corner, our factors would be x minus 3 and x minus 2. Now look for things that can cancel. Remember you can cancel top to bottom or you can cancel diagonally. I see x minus 5's that will cancel. I see x uh, minus 1's that will cancel. And I see x minus 3's that will cancel. When we look at our leftovers, we have x minus 2 left on top, excuse me, x plus 2 left on top, x minus 2 left on bottom. This is as far as we can go, and this is our final answer. We cannot cancel the x's, we cannot cancel the 2's. Both top and bottom have marriages, and we cannot break into those marriages by canceling the x's or canceling the 2's.